In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the most realistic shadows in Photoshop in three steps. Okay, so I've started with a layer on top. I've got many other tutorials where I show you how to cut out and match colors and things. What we're going to do is focus on the shadow. So let's go down to the effects and choose drop shadow. Now on the drop shadow, you want to set opacity to 100 and then set distance spread and size all of these to zero. Click OK. You might just see a faint black outline around there right now, but that's our shadow. And what we want to do is separate it onto its own layer. So where it says effects in the layers panel, right click and then choose create layer. Click OK. And if I hide our layer, you can see there's our shadow now on a separate layer. Now, step one, let's position and angle it. This is out of the three steps, remember. So let's select the layer with the shadow, hit Control T, Command T on Mac, brings up Free Transform. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to right click within here and we want to choose Flip Vertical. Great. Now, let's just drag this down. And we're just going to line it up at the bottom. Now, sometimes, as you see here, it's not going to quite match. So we just rotate this slightly. Great. Now, let's zoom out. In this case, I'm going to hold the Alt key and just use the scroll wheel on my mouse. And what we want to do is we want to skew this at an angle. So see where the light is coming from? So if you think about where that light is coming from, from the light source, let me just zoom in. So if we look at this, the light source is here. You want to have that in a straight line, basically following that shadow. So right click on the shadow and choose skew. And then we're going to skew that across. So the angle now is matching where the light's coming from. Great. We also want to elongate this a little bit. So right click once again. And notice I haven't gone out of free transform yet. And now I'm going to choose scale and I'm going to drag it down. So we're stretching it a little bit. Notice all of these are done in one movement. Then we hit enter. Okay. So step one, we now have the position of our shadow, but there's two things missing. If you look at a previous shadow one here, notice as it gets closer to the subject, the edge is harder, it gets softer as it goes further away. Also notice that it gets more transparent the further it gets away from the subject. Let's do that right now. With the shadow selected, let's add the blur, step two. Filter, don't choose blur, choose blur gallery and grab the field blur. And you'll see this little icon will appear and we can drag this and this is our blur. Now, if we drag across here, we can increase the amount of blur. Look at that. And of course, we can take it right off the page if we want. OK, so we've got our blur and it's definitely making the shadow look better. In fact, I'm going to go even more just so we can really make this work. But the problem is, as it gets closer to the subject, we need it to be sharp. So just click to add another point. Now, you could take the blur all the way to zero. The way to do that is if you hold down Control or Command, double click that little pin that will actually remove all the blur and just set it to zero. But I feel like we want to put just a little bit in there. So let's drag the little wheel here, grab the amount of blur we want. That's definitely looking a lot better. Great. OK, let's apply that. Click OK. Now, the next step we need to do is we need to make it fade as it goes away. I just want to move it up just a little bit, though. I'm going to hit Control T. And let's just right click and we're going to choose warp. And what I'm doing here is I just want to pull that shadow up a little bit in that area. So it's a little bit closer to our model. There we go. That's good. Got a little light coming through, which is nice. All right, let's fade it as it comes towards the viewer. So what we want to do is add a layer mask. Once we've selected a layer mask, we're going to choose a gradient. So hit the D key to reset foreground background colors. Choose the gradient tool. Set it to either black to white or foreground background. Linear. The mode should be normal and opacity at 100. Now I'm going to drag up 
just to check which way it's going. Yep, it's going the way I want. Okay, so what I want to do, notice that the shadow is definitely fading, but that's a little bit more than what we need. So I'm actually going to start it off the screen and pull it up this way. And notice now we get this fade is kind of fading away. By the way, that was step number three was the fade. So what we're going to do is choose the mask with the properties panel open density. Did you ever wonder what that does? Density is like opacity for a mask. So let's just dial in the amount of density we want. So it's fading away. I feel like the shadow is a little strong overall. So choose the shadow layer and drop the opacity down just a little bit. There we go. Let's go back to our mask. Fine tune our density. And there we go. A very realistic looking shadow. We can hide the shadow. There's before and after. Let me know in the comments underneath if you learned anything new and if you guys haven't yet subscribed or you're new, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications and you won't miss any of my tutorials. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, the like button and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.